G'day guys, Jeff from Beer Cartel here, broadcasting live again to Facebook from Beer Cartel HQ in Sydney. Uh, I hope your Thursday is going well and that the rest of the week has gone well for you. Only one more day for the week and then it's the weekend. I hope you guys have got some good beers planned and some good plans in place to enjoy those beers. This is a Thursday post. Uh, and as always, I take you through a couple of the new beers that have arrived in store and are available also online. Um, this week, it's mainly an Australian affair with a couple of international ones thrown in there for good measure from the US. Um, and it's a slightly smaller haul than I normally have every week. It's not a bad thing. Sometimes it's a big week. Sometimes it's a slightly smaller week for the new beers. Um, so I will almost take you through all of them, or at least mention all of the new beers. Uh, and at the end, I'll just put a call out for the last call for August Beer Club subscription packs. Um, some of you guys already are members. Other guys out there, you may be considering it. So I'll take you through some of the beers um, that will be coming up in the August packs, as well as uh, just the benefits of being a Beer Club subscriber. So first off, I wanted to run through some new beers that we've just actually um, had arrive in this week. Uh, they're from Green Beacon. So Green Beacon are based um, in Queensland in a, um, a suburb just on the Brisbane River there called Tenerife. Um, if my geography and knowledge of Brisbane um, is any good, I think Tenerife is a, a, a pretty good suburb to live in and probably a pretty good um, suburb to have a brewery in. So they've been going for a few years um, and their beers traditionally haven't always made it down to New South Wales. So like many small breweries, they struggle to keep up with local demand or, um, or want for their beers. And so based on their capacity, they don't always look to stretch themselves um, and expand out into either interstate markets um, or, or uh, you know, even looking at overseas export markets. But we have managed to get some of their beers. Um, I'll take you through them in just a second. Um, interesting thing with these guys, last week, uh, or last weekend, I think on the 21st or 22nd of last week, was the Craft Beer Awards, the Industry Awards up in Brisbane. And these guys took out um, Champion Medium Brewery, and they also took out a couple of awards for their beers. And I'll just refer to my notes just so I get this right. Um, so, yeah, they took Champion Medium Brewery Award out, um, and then they got Champion Specialty Beer for their Bourbon Barrel Age Strong Ale. As far as I'm aware, that's only available in keg release only, so we won't have any of that. But they also took out a gold medal for their Three Bolt Pale Ale, uh, which is this one here. So the Three Bolt Pale Ale. Um, that one there says it's a Session Ale, um, and so we were talking about it here. Uh, just a bit earlier this afternoon with regards to what is a Sessionale Pale Ale or whether they intended it to be a Sessionale Pale Ale. Um, so my thoughts was if it's a Sessionale Pale Ale, should it be more along the lines of about 3.5%? Um, well, these guys think not because they've made one at 4.5%. So maybe they're just saying it's a Pale Ale that you can have a session on. Um, so that's their uh, three bolt Pale Ale, which won gold um, at the uh, Craft Beer Awards in Brisbane last week. And the other two, they got two silver awards, one for their Wayfarer USA American Wheat. So that's the USA American Wheat. Um, so this has got, in their malt bill, it's got uh, both malted barley as well as wheat. Um, and so a bit like a, uh, a German Hef kind of malt bill, but obviously not necessarily with that yeast. Um, and being American, it will have uh, more hop characteristics to it. So that's one there with the stars and stripes. Uh, and the interesting thing with all these cans, obviously green beacon, if you think about navigational terms for sailing, um, you obviously have beacons or markers within rivers and, and whatnot. And one of them traditionally is red and the other one is traditionally uh, green. Um, and so that's my understanding of where the name comes from. They're on the Brisbane River in Tenerife. They've taken the name Green Beacon, um, and they've got an anchor as part of their uh, their logo. And you can see that with all their beers, I'll just go back to the three bolt. That's the, the look of a, a sailor, a, a diver, I should say, old school diver helmet. The uh, the wayfarer's got uh, the old captain with a, a pipe in it. So they've kind of taken that theme with all of their beers. Um, and the other one that was a silver medal was the Windjammer IPA. And you can see the old school clipper sailing ship that's on that one as well. So again, uh, paying uh, due respect to the old sailors and whatnot. And the last one is the cross knot Kolsch. So that one's just obviously got a knot on it. So sailor's knot on it. So all 
referencing sailing terms. Um, they'll cost you about, I think they're about five, five fifty on the can, on the single can, with the IPA being a little bit more expensive at six dollars, and that is uh, because there's going to be more excise than that to our good government. I'm not quite sure what they do with it, um, but yeah, they take a bit more um, of the slice in terms of excise tax. So that's at six percent in alcohol, and the, the others are around sort of five percent thereabouts. So that's Green Beacon from Queensland. I highly recommend that if you, A, like beers in cans, um, B, like Australian beers, um, and want to try something new. Um, I have had only the uh, the Windjammer IPA at a staff tasting that we had probably about four or five months, six months ago. One of our staff members had mulled some down from Queensland, um, and I tried that, and I thought it was, it was quite good. So I will be looking forward to tasting some of the other beers over the weekend, um, but that's Green Beacon. That's the first lot of beers that I want to take you through that are new for this week. The other beers, these I'll just touch on these because I haven't had them. I haven't had any, any of these. I've obviously had beers from Stone Brewing in the States. So they've got two new beers. One is their Citrusy Wit. So uh, I, I would expect that to be a Belgian-styled wit beer with lots of citrus in it. Um, so that's one new one from Stone Brewing in the US. Um, and the next one is their Mocha IPA. So this has got coffee and cacao beans uh, thrown in for good measure into the brew. Um, and while it says IPA on the actual label, um, it is actually described as a double IPA. Um, and it comes in at 9% alcohol. So yeah, definitely not just your 6 to 7% IPA. This is a, uh, definitely a double IPA at 9%. And that's their Mocha IPA with cacao and coffee thrown in for good measure. So again, another one, if you're a, an American beer fan, uh, that's probably one for you to enjoy. Obviously, uh, probably best enjoyed fresh. Most or all of these beers would be best enjoyed fresh. They're not kind of aging beers by any means. Um, and one of our favourite Australian breweries, Feral from Western Australia, have released another brew pub series. So the brew pub series is a release of beers that they do um, effectively beers that were keg only releases. They do as seasonal releases or one off releases. Um, and the last one was their Warhog that they did in bottles. Um, a couple of months ago. Um, this is their Ace of Base. It's an Imperial India Saison. Again, I haven't had this one, so I can't comment on it, but the, the, la, the probably one of the only India Saisons, oh, sorry, I've had a couple of India Saisons, but the one that comes to mind that it's Australian made. Um, one is Wolf of the Willows have got one, um, and uh, Bridge Road have got theirs that they did in collaboration with Nim Nur, um from Norway. Um, and so being an Imperial Saison, I expect um, higher levels of alcohol um, and quite sort of... Um, from the saison, you'd expect to get sort of yeast esters um, and quite sort of citrus and lime characteristics. Another one to watch out for, limited release. Once it's gone, it's gone. Um, and you can get that both in store and online. Now, these are two that I've had in the last 24 hours. Um, so if you saw my video probably about three weeks ago when I was at Murray's Brewing Co., I did mention the Black Bear um, black IPA that they were going to release in bottles. And so moving on from their um, dark month in June, so every June Murray's traditionally releases their Wild Thing, which is their Imperial Stout. This year they released the Wild Thing Imperial Stout as well as their Wild Thing Imperial Stout Coffee, um, which had a thousand shots of espresso. I think we've still got some of that around if you didn't catch that last video. Um, but these are the releases for July. So they're kind of on a bit of a, 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 a mission, I think, to release some new beers. Um, and these are two IPAs, one being just a traditional IPA and the one being a black IPA. So I took these, uh, both of these home last night. Um, I shared the Thunderbolt IPA with my wife, Claire. She um, really, really enjoys beers now. Five, six years ago when, I start, when we started this business, um, she was a cider and wine drinker. And now um, she really looks forward to when I bring home some new beers. The only beers she will not really drink are Hefeweizens and wit beers. She's not big fans of those. Um, but basically everything else, uh, oh, and smoked beers. So she doesn't like anything from Schlenkerler, um, so no Roush beers. But she thoroughly enjoyed this one. And my only regret last night was only buying one bottle. I should have bought one for myself and one for her. So I shared that 7% um, IPA. It is quite a multi IPA. So it had a beautiful red hue to it. Um, and so if you're, you're kind of wanting sort of a, a, a more of a West Coast styled IPA with the 
a cleaner malt bill. This probably won't be the beer for you, but if you don't mind a bit of um, maltiness in your beer, in your IPAs, um, then I definitely recommend the uh, Murray Thunderbolt. Again, limited release. Um, that one is a $7.50 on the bottle. Um, and the other one is the Black Bear. So the Black Bear is a black IPA. You might uh, recall from my video last week where I talked about Cascadian um, Dark Owls and Black IPAs effectively being one and the same. Um, and so Four Pines released their double Cascadian um, Dark Ale uh, or Dark IPA. Um, obviously, it's in the same realm. Theirs is a double, so I mean high alcohol. Um, and this is a single IPA, if you want to think of it, of, of it in that, that sense. Um, when I had this last night, I just had the two beers. I had the Thunderbolt and I had this one. This is um, quite sort of porterish in its um, in its malt um, backbone or its malt characteristics uh, and profile. So if you enjoy a good uh, porter um, with some hops added into it, then I would definitely recommend the Black Bear IPA from Murray's. Again, limited release. This one's six dollars on the bottle for the Black Bear and nineteen ninety nine on the four pack. So it's pretty good value. Um, and yeah, that's uh, that's pretty fresh because it's only just been brewed and just released. So that's the seasonal release from Murray's is those two. And they're all the new beers for this this week. Um, so I'll just line them up. You've got the two from Murray's that I just spoke about. You've got the Feral India Saison. You've got the cans from Green Beacon up in Queensland. And then you've also got the Mocker IPA and the Citrusy wit from stone brewing in the us so they're all the new beers available in store and online obviously um, so take a look drop into the shop have a chat to the guys and myself um, and we can sort you out with some good beers for the weekend and the last thing i want to talk about is just make a call out for our beer club subscription packs so some of you as i mentioned may be members or subscribers others may be considering it some others, uh, other guys out there, you guys might have it on your wish list, maybe for Father's Day or Christmas every year. Um, but I just want to take you through what's in the August pack and a couple of the benefits. So we've been doing the beer club since 2009. Um, and every month we send out a fresh pack of beers out to our subscribers Australia-wide. So if you're in Tassie, far north Queensland, WA, SA, it doesn't really matter. Sydney, we will ship uh, anywhere you like. Um, and we can also you can also select to have in-store pickup. So if you want to avoid the freight cost and you live locally, you can also select to pick it up in-store and you get an SMS that tells you when it's ready for pickup in-store. Um, we've got a couple different variations. We've got a six pack, which is three different beers by two of each. We've got a 12 pack, which is really, really good value. Um, and that's four different beers, three of those, uh, four different beers, three of each of those beers. A 24 pack, which is a six pack, um, of four different beers. So the 24 pack, obviously a lot of guys in offices um, and work for the workplace, they get that and that kind of sorts out their Friday drinks um, for the month until they get the next pack and they get some new beers. We've never repeated a single beer um, in the seven odd years that we've been doing uh, the beer club subscription pack, something we're quite proud of. We've always sourced new um, and interesting beers from both Australia and overseas. The August pack, is an all Australian affair. So we have had some uh, international beers of late um, and this is an all Australian affair um, this time around. So I'll just take you through it. Um, the beers that you can expect in the August pack. Uh, first off is the Hawthorne Pale Ale. So Hawthorne been going for a, a number of years down in Victoria, Gypsy Brewer, um, and they have won quite a stack of awards over the years. Um, and from memory, this over the last three years has won a couple of uh, Silvers and and uh, and bronzes. The gold is slightly elusive for these guys on their pale ale, um, but I'm sure they'll keep uh, entering it in and keep trying to chase down um, the gold medal. They do a lot in the export markets, is my understanding, and I know that they're quite popular, obviously, down in Victoria and Melbourne, um, in particular being named after one of the suburbs. Um, you know, you get local community kind of um, backing um, the beer. So that's the first beer in the August pack is the Hawthorne Pale Ale. Next up, also from Victoria, uh, this is Hop Nation. This is The Fiend. So it's an Australian IPA. So this, the, it's a Hop Nation, um, effectively well, started, or is 
owned and started by two guys who are ex-winemakers. There's a few of them out there that are uh, brewers in Australia that are ex-winemakers that have uh, now turned their hand to actual brewing. Uh, obviously beer is much better than wine, is it not? I don't know, you can tell me. Um, I much prefer a beer than wine. Um, and this is the theme, this is Australian IPA. So Hop Nation, they're all about kind of the hops. And in this one, uh, they look to showcase Australian hops. Um, I couldn't quite see exactly what the, the hops were, but I'm guessing if it's going to be Australian, you could expect a good whack of Galaxy to be in there. So Galaxy being a hop that is um, quite frequently used in Australian IPAs and Australian beers. Uh, think of Stone and Wood, um, Pacific Ale, that is basically all Galaxy hops in that big sort of fruity aromatics. So that's uh, basically freshly bottled uh, last week um, or two weeks ago, something along those lines. Um, so it's quite fresh. The next one, the next two are actually from Sydney. So this is the American Amber Ale from Four Pines. This is their latest release in bottles. So this uh, has been released in kegs before and had been available at their venues around Sydney and on tap at different venues that support good craft beer. But this is their American Amber Ale. I find it interesting that they had a big push for this beer to be American Amber Ale, which I quite like that style, don't get me wrong. Um, it, t- it means that you've got an Amber Ale, which is supported by um, some a good hop addition, um, being an American Amber Ale. But if you look at the label, it's the finest print I've ever seen. So if you're looking at it and you go, okay, that's an Amber Ale, you've got to go, kind of go searching for the American part. But again, freshly uh, brewed and released. This is the American Amber Ale from Four Pines and that'll be um, in our subscription packs. They're the first three beers that you'll find in the six pack, so you get two of each of those. Um, And then in the 12 pack and the 24 pack, you actually uh, get an extra beer. Uh, And that extra beer for August is the 88 Porter from Riverside. Again, freshly bottled last week, this one. Um, So we just got that uh, uh, sent over to us. Obviously these guys are local Sydney brewers based in Parramatta, or North Rocks, I should say. Um, They have a cellar door there where you can go and visit on a, I think, Friday and a Saturday. You can definitely go in and get some growler fills. Um, So this is their Robust 88 um, Porter. So that's the lineup of beers that will be in the um, Beer Club subscription packs to be sent out start of next week. So if you're a subscriber, this is what you can expect to land on your doorstep uh, or in your office. Um, And if you haven't subscribed and you like to find out a little bit more, um, we'll put a link with regards to our subscription packs. You also get a, uh, a booklet. So that booklet just goes through and it uh, has a little article there that's written up. Um, this month is an article that talks about $1,000 worth of discounts, freebies and offers from different participating breweries. I'll be doing a video on that in the coming weeks, um, telling everyone out there how they can actually get access to it. Um, and then it also just has uh, yeah, a bit more information on all the beers. The brewers um, suggested kind of drinking glass to use for each of the beers, the style, where they come from, um, and a little bit of a history on the beers and the characteristics of each of those beers. So there you have it. That's another uh, video for the week. Uh, so this is a Thursday video, all the latest beers. I'll just pop them out there just as I'm uh, wrapping up. And uh, talking about uh, tinnies and cans, uh, you can expect to see some new cans from Bolter Brewing. Um, so again, another Queensland Australian brewer um, that have released some of their can, uh, some of their beers in cans. They're a new brewer. I think they've been going less less than six months, probably about three months or so, um, and they're kind of hitting um, hitting their stride um, with single beers, and their beers are making their way down to New South Wales. So Bolter Brewing, ex- expect uh, they've got a brown ale and an XPA, which will be available um, in the coming days online. So they're the beers. Thanks for tuning in. And as always, have a great end of week and weekend and happy drinking. Cheers, guys.